got you and that's it man go purchase big passports talk merch and support the family man and welcome to big passports talk thank you for your support what's going on youtube instagram twitter all platforms welcome to another episode of new york giants full access with your boy big passports talk and today's subject is how concerned should the new york giants B with Evan Neal, former first round pick, number seven overall. How concerned should they be with Evan Neal going into this season? As we know, Evan Neal has struggled mightily in his first two years at the right tackle position. And for the most part, when you do watch the games, he looks a little confused when it comes to blocking assignments period when you've watched him against the Cowboys he lets Demarcus Lawrence look like the greatest of all time in multiple occasions uh, there's multiple occasions where he misses blocking assignments you know um, there's multiple occasions where he allows a defensive edge rusher to use his speed to get to the quarterback immediately um, he looks a little slow with his hands, even though he has long arms. It's not as like he's not using his arm lift correctly. His stance is, uh, I think, is a hindrance to his performance as well. And we all know that the offensive line, well, most of us know, unless you go to Twitter, that the offensive line is the most important position. So... The New York Giants went into this offseason. They signed, I believe, at least five offensive linemen, maybe six. They signed the backup center. They signed Runyon, light skin Jermaine. They signed two other guards. Yeah, and another right tackle. So six. Um, How concerned should they be with Evan Neal? Because if Evan Neal plays like he has the past two seasons, seasons could his play outweigh the improvement of John Runyon and light skin Jermaine if they are an improvement at the guard positions that we had last year and let's just say JMS improves and Andrew Thomas continues to dominate could Evan Neal's lackluster play <clears throat> If he does play the exact same this year, if he hasn't improved or lost the weight, could he derail this offensive line? There's a possibility he could. So, if he is playing poorly, how many games do you give him before you pull the plug and move him to the bench or move him to guard or whatever you're going to do with him, trade him, Whatever you're going to do with him, how long do you give him? Do you give him four games? Do you give him six games or eight games or ten games or the whole season if he's struggling? Because this offensive line is going to determine a whole lot with this offense this year. Hell, with this team. <laughs> If this offensive line doesn't produce or at least be NFL caliber, we can have a whole nother horrible season. And I hate to say it, it might cost jobs. It's definitely going to cost Daniel Jones his job. And it's definitely going to cost him his job more than likely. 
and that's just two people. It can trickle. It can trickle down and cost you know Slayton a job. Uh, it can cost Brian Dable his job, Kafka his job, Joe Shane his job. It cost the offensive line coach his job. So, what are the Giants willing to do with Evan Neal if he struggles? Let's say he struggles during the preseason. Let's say he struggles during training camp. Do you allow him to go on the field during a regular season and put your quarterback in jeopardy? When the first week you face a better Vikings defense, the second week you you face the commander's edge rush, the third week you face the Cleveland Browns rush, and you know those dudes are legit, then you face the Cowboys edge rush. Then you face Seattle's edge rush. It's not like we're playing a bunch of bum teams that don't have edge rush at the beginning of the season. So how long do you allow him to struggle before you pull the plug? See, me personally, I do believe you have to give Evan Neal his shot. I believe it's only fair. You've invested so much into this guy. You've invested... A top 10 pick on this guy, number 7 overall pick to be exact. And you brought him here to be a pillar opposite of Andrew Thomas. And just for the simple fact that if that works out, that solid, that solidifies your line, I do believe you have to give him his shot. But because he's a top draft pick, is his leash a little shorter? Is his leash a little longer? Do you allow him to struggle to see if he can come out of it with a different coach? With a different scheme? Well, it's pretty much not a different scheme. It may be a different scheme around the O-line. I'll give him that. You have to learn how uh, Brasillo does his offensive line. But when you have somebody like Jermaine Elamore, a.k.a. light-skinned Jermaine, that can play the right tackle position, and he's done it quite well over the past few years, that's where he's taking most of his snaps. And you have somebody like uh, Sidham on the bench that's a starting caliber guard. Do you allow him to get your quarterbacks punished? No matter who the quarterback is, whether it's Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, Tommy Cutlets, whoever. Do you allow him to affect the game like that? Do you allow him to affect the offensive scheme like that? Because if he's struggling, you have to put a tight end to block and help and chip with him all game. That takes weapons off the field. It shortens the amount of time the quarterback has to get the ball down the field with the speed that we have in Slayton, Robinson, Hyatt, and Neighbors. It takes their effective effectiveness away. It takes the effective effectiveness away from your play calling. So now you have to throw shorter routes. Now the defense can choke up a little bit more. So these are some of the questions that I'm thinking about this offensive line. Is Andrew Thomas, Light Skin Jermaine, uh, John Michael Schmitz, John Runyon, and Evan Neal your best lineup that you can literally put on that field? For me right now, because of Evan Neal's struggles, I will say no. To be honest with you, I think our best lineup will be Andrew Thomas, Runyon, left guard, JMS center, Stidham, right guard, and light skin Jermaine at right tackle. I do believe that will be our best offensive line that we could put on the field as of right now because I don't know the progression of Evan Neal so once again like I said last year Evan Neal's progression is going to be dire to this offense this offense to produce and if Evan Neal is out there struggling again that's going to make it very hard for this offense to get going because I believe this offense will be predicated on the pass. I do believe out of every 10 plays, it's going to be at least seven passes. And if we can't spread people out with the talent that we have, because I believe 
the talent that receiver we have, we're better in a spread offense. Like Theo Johnson and Hyatt and Slayton and Wandell Robinson. The really only legit dog that we have at receiver on the outside, because I do believe Wandell Robinson's a dog in the slot pause is Malik Neighbors. He's the only really threat that you can line up and, and be confident that he can beat that guy no matter what the co coverage is. I don't believe Hyatt can get off the line of scrimmage very well right now early in his career. Slayton is probably a tick better. Wondell Robinson is small in stature, so putting your hands on him will be a good idea. And Neighbors is really the only guy that you would really fear in the bump and run coverage from your DB, to be honest with you. Theo Johnson's not a very good blocker, so right now in his career, I don't believe he's a very good blocker. So you will have to put Bellinger in there to help chip with Evan Neal, and that takes a whole receiver off the field. And it takes away from attacking the middle of the field like you would want and have those deep threats on the outside getting down the field and making those safeties spread themselves out so it allows defenses to run a lot of cover one and allows the defense to run a lot of cover two it allows the defenses to run a lot of man to man because Evan Neal is getting beat so quick that it would be hard for Daniel Jones to actually escape out because now you can hold a spy right there as well So these are some of the things that I'm thinking about with Evan Neal when it comes to him blocking on this offensive line. Can he derail the whole offensive line? In my mind, I'm saying yes, but I have to do a little bit more film study to see if this offense could overcome that and be more and still be dangerous on the field, losing a valuable weapon out there on the field. Because somebody's gonna have to stay in there, stay in there a block. You don't have Barkley anymore. But I do believe Singletary and Tyrone Tracy and Eric Gray can actually be a decent weapon out the backfield, but they can't be Barkley as far as catching. But those guys combined, you know, they could give you they could give you a little ump out the backfield. But I believe this offense is can be its deadliest when they have you spread out with four receivers and maybe an inline tight end that can get up to the scene and you got to cover Wondell Robinson on those short quick routes with his route running you got to cover Malik Neighbors you got to cover Hyatt you got to cover Slayton you know so I'm all for giving people their shot and I'm not saying that you have to bench Evan Neal immediately but how long do you take to bench Evan Neal if he's st still struggling. That's a very, 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 very important question this season, especially if this season is predicated on you winning in order to keep your job as far as Coach Debo and Joe Shane. Do you let this man derail your season because he still hasn't picked up on the NFL speed of the game? He's still allowing edge rushers to get directly a, a straight path to the quarterback this is a serious question for me man because this offensive line I promise you is the most important part to this team and it's the most important part to any team whether you believe it or not yes the quarterback is extremely important but if this offensive line doesn't block your scheme is messed up your receivers don't get a lot of time to get open your, your quarterback doesn't get enough time to run scan the field you can't call a lot of deep passes. You can't call a lot of things because your offensive line is not producing. It's not protecting the quarterback. It's not giving the quarterback enough time to get in a position to throw the ball. It's not allowing him to set his feet. It's not allowing him to step up in a pocket. It's not allowing him to scan the field. It, it, the offensive line is extremely important. Extremely important to the success of your offense hell the success of your team because if you're going three and out three and out three and out you're putting your defense out there too long and eventually they're going to start to give up points and guess what if you can't put up points and you're giving up points more than likely you're going to end that game with an L 
<laughs> I'm just saying. So, Evan Neal, man, we're going to need you to step up. Hopefully, you've lost some weight. I've seen the picture. It looks like you lost a lot of weight. Um, we need you to get healthy because you have a, a, a strenuous injury history, man. Um, yeah. That's the question, man. How long of a leash do you give Evan Neal this season? If he's struggling in the preseason, do you say, you know what, plan B? If he's struggling after the first two games, like, you know what, plan B? Or after the first four games, do you pull him? Or do you continue to allow him to get beat like a drum and ruin the flow of your offense? Because I do believe this offense could be pretty dang good if they have a consistent flow. Even with Daniel Jones at quarterback, I know people think he's the worst quarterback in the world, but I do believe if he ha if he's protected, he can make the plays needed to win games. I honestly believe that. So we're going to see, man. But I did this video uh, because I just had this question in my head. Shout out to NYG22, man. Um, we've gone back and forth about this. NYG has a totally different... point of view about this he's saying bench Evan Neal now you don't even have to waste time uh, a lot of people are saying bench Evan Neal now I'm one of the guys that's saying hey you do have to give him his shot it's only year three and you, you've only seen him in about 20 games because he's been injured often injured um, hell he couldn't per, uh, participate in minicamp because he was injured so it is what it is, man. It's a tough, it's a tough conversation to have, man, because he is a, a, a first round pick, and you gotta let those guys, you, you gotta let those guys on the field to see what they can do. In all honesty, so I like to thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that big blue join button, and join uh, and talk your talk with Big Pass Sports Talk and join the Big Blue Crew. Cop you some merch. Thank you guys for all the guys who've copped some merch in the past couple of weeks. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much for the support. And until the next episode, you know what it is, man. Peace. Hitting the mic, yes, spitting the facts, coming with full access. Big Pat in the house with giant tactics. Eli's handoff, rapping the classics. 90s beats, we blast this in New York. Big Blue. Where the G-Men roam, Super Bowls in the vault, that's the Empire's home. Red, white, and blue, where the legends have grown. Giants full access, this the zone, got the tone. Big, 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 big